Welcome to the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson. And thanks for checking out the Art of Money podcast. My name is Mark Owens alongside Art McPherson and Luke McCarty. All the information for the McPherson Financial Group. You can find it at theartofmoneyradio.com. And I know that some of the questions you often get is, you know, how do I have enough money to last through retirement? But I know that Art said this before that sometimes he gets the question is, now what? I finally clocked out for the last time. What's next? Because after 19 seasons, Ellen, have you heard about this? She's ending her TV shows. And she says, well, even though I'm retiring from TV, I'm not done yet. I don't know yet. I mean, I know that I'm not done done. There'll be another chapter and I don't know exactly what that is. I have a couple of ideas and I think I'm going to rest for a little bit because this has been a lot for 19 years and I want to be clear headed on my next choice. I'm going to probably continue to buy and sell houses. I love houses and I love design. So I'll probably do design work for a while and and then I don't know. So Patrick, you know, Luke, when you have somebody that says I'm I'm done with the 9 to 5. I'm ready to retire, but now what? <laughs> what advice do you give them when they don't know what's next? That's the fun part. That's when you know, we get to kind of reflect, look back, see what's important and ask those fun questions what they want to do. Uh, we kind of give our clients a heads up on the typical norm of what we see, you know, so if someone's retiring around 60 to 65, we've got about 10 years of the go-go years. So that's when you're going to be traveling the most, going to see family the most. Um, and then typically over time, as we get older on that 70 to 75 range, that starts the next 10 years of the slow go years. So uh, you're still doing some fun stuff. You're still up and at them and moving and traveling. But once we kind of hit that top end, we then have to factor in call it the no-go years. So that's when we're really cautious or we have those unfortunate health events that happen, you know, with our loved ones and with ourselves. But we really just get to have the, that fun conversation of you've created this nest egg. You've worked so hard to create your life's financial work piece. And we get to help you design a feasible plan for you, your legacy, your family to go enjoy it as you should. Yeah, so we have a book that we give out to clients and when Art and I are sitting down with them, we can tell if they need this book or not. It's how to prepare for retirement, mm -hmm. right? What it's like going from being, you know, somebody who's worked their whole life, somebody who has the, you know, feels very important at their job to now going home, right? Or doing, you know, whatever, playing golf. And it, it kind of prepares you mentally for it. So if you want a copy of this book, give us a call, go on the website, um, send us a note, you know, we'll just mail you the book. Or if you come in to see us for an appointment and we feel like you're one of these people who, hey, what's next? We're going to give you this book, you know, because we have a lot of clients who retire, right? Retire at 55, 60, 65, you name it. And some of them get bored. Yeah. Some of them go back to work. We just did a social security seminar at River Rocks a couple of weeks ago. And I talked about this a little bit and the one thing from a social security perspective is, right, if you're retiring before your full retirement age, be careful going back to work. So if that's in the cards for you, be careful starting social security because you will be limited to 19,000-ish of earnings you can make every year without the penalty of social security. So it's going to be difficult for some of us. I think it might be easy for me, but we'll see when I get there. I've got a long ways to go. 321-425-8550. <laughs> Take advantage of it. It's all about education and information here on The Art of Money and the McPherson Financial Group. And let me ask you this, because of the interest rate hikes, because of inflation, gas prices, Luke, have you seen anyone that's come in and said, hey, I've only been punched out for about six months now, but... I'm going to have to jump back into the workforce. Is it happening more than you thought or not as much as you would think? It hasn't happened much yet. Um, that happened a little bit in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. If you retired in February or March of 2020, it didn't feel very good. You know, by the end of the year, it felt good. So it hasn't happened that much yet, but people are concerned about inflation. Um, you know, people are concerned about gas prices, about the stock market, about interest rates, about Russia, Ukraine, I mean, there's a laundry list of things to be concerned about. But, you know, your financial plan that we build for you isn't geared for tomorrow. It's geared for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that plan that says we're going to, this is our course of action. These are our buckets of money. Here's how it plays out in good markets. Here's how it plays out in bad markets. And we'll be okay either way. 321-425-8550. We're always talking about education. So let me ask you this, Luke, Patrick, which state... In the 50 states, which one do you think is the smartest one in the U.S.? Florida. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> what would you say, Luke? The smartest? Yep. Mm, 
Probably somewhere in the Northeast. Yeah. <laughs> That's where all the big Ivy Leagues are. Well, you're yeah. not wrong. According to Wallet Hub, it's Massachusetts, followed by Maryland, Connecticut, Colorado, and Vermont. And the least smartest state, West Virginia. So this all comes under the metrics of school quality, GPAs, and college accreditation. Uh, great state of Florida. Where do you think we popped up? Middle of the pack. Middle of the pack. You're about right. <laughs> 22nd. 22nd. Hey, but listen, you're not as bad as your border states. Uh, Georgia was 33rd and Alabama was 46th. Least smartest state. So, yeah, you're right. You're right there in the middle. So let me ask you this. Give me a little retirement red zone 101. Educate me. If I'm serious about it, I'm going to get that portfolio together. I'm getting serious about my retirement plans. What is the very first thing I should do or I should know? The very first thing you should do is probably get organized. If it's something you can't do on your own, that's one thing we offer to our clients. Organization. If you have 401ks, IRAs, you know, different accounts. I mean, we have people come in here with 20 different accounts and 20 different accounts, some holding the same assets, some doing the same thing, some doing complete opposites. So I'd say getting organized on your own and getting organized with a team, you know, like us here to help you do some things like that and say, okay, what if we combined these accounts, you know, what else could we buy? You know, what's our buying power then if we start combining things and how much easier is it for me and my family to just have a couple accounts instead of 30? And then, of course, it plays into the legacy planning, too, to have a fewer number of accounts. But I'd say, number one, I'd just say get organized, do your homework. We give our clients or anybody who calls in and wants to come to meet with us a retirement kit. I'll let Pat talk a little bit about the retirement kit, but um, it's a way to, for you to just think through things. Yeah, and with that retirement kit, and then I would follow it up with after you get organized and just figure out what you have, um, you got to get organized with questions. Uh, when you meet with us or a different financial advisor, you should definitely have a slew of questions ready to ask. And I love this little analogy that goes along with asking the right questions and, and having that transparency in the relationship is, quick question to you, Mark, where do you start a puzzle? When you're building a puzzle, where do you start? Um, I try to find the corner piece, I think. <laughs> The corner or any words. <laughs> right. Okay. So typically the most common answer I always give with that question is the corner, which is great. That does start, you know, the corners of the foundation, build the border, then work out the details in the middle. That sounds great. And is typically the answer. But what happens if you put the corners in the wrong spots and the, you build it upside down? Oh, yeah. So the true actual <laughs> starting point is the picture on the box. Mm. Start so with the picture. We have to ask the right questions to paint the picture to know how to build the puzzle. It's all about the education. There you have it. It's all about the process of building that retirement puzzle. I love that. That is a great analogy. 321 425 8550. We talk taxes a lot here on The Art of Money, and it's not a fun conversation, but it's something that we need to have. So we hit the streets and asked some of our listeners Are your taxes going to go up? Or will they go down once you retire? I think when I retire, my taxes will stay the same. Um, I don't know. When I retire, I think my taxes will go down. I like the, I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me these questions. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> so the question is, Luke, Patrick, what is it? Are taxes going to go up, down, or stay the same when we leave the workforce? Well, it depends. Everybody's a little bit different when it comes to how much money you've saved, the type of account you saved it in, and the tax bracket you're currently in. Um, what we see that is different from, you know, your Schwab's or your Vanguard's or fidelities, you know, when you Google it, is that, you know, they say, they, not us, they say you spend about 70% of your income in retirement. Well, that's not what we see here, right? The first 10 to 15 years, you're going to spend more. So depending on how you saved, if you've saved everything in a traditional 401k, so that means everything you take out is taxable, well, then your taxes are probably going up because you're going to spend more money in those first 10 years than you have before. And we feel taxes are going up after the Trump tax cut sunset in 2026. So on your own, on paper, I'd say taxes are going up. You know, if you're a financial planning client of ours, our goal is for your taxes to go down by using our financial planning techniques over time to get you in a lower tax bracket to even get you tax free. So what we talk about when we talk about the portfolio x-ray, that includes your tax strategy. Let's see what adjustments need to be made. The next five callers are gonna get a complimentary portfolio x-ray. Again, no obligation, no cost to you. 321-425-8550, always online at artofmoneyradio.com. Thanks for listening. Want more from Art McPherson of McPherson Financial Group? Find us online at artofmoneyradio.com. 
We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of financial and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Securities offered through World Equity Group, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Investment advisory services offered through ProStatus Group, LLC. McPherson Financial Group and ProStatus Group, LLC are separate entities and are not owned or controlled by World Equity Group, Inc. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Investment financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. Art McPherson is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Arthur McPherson. Florida Insurance License Number A174725. Today's show has been a work of art. 